This is Javier Onzueta with Javi's Woodshop. Welcome to Tools for the Unenlightened. Part 3. It's hammer time. Tools for the Unenlightened is a humorous, simplified look at everyday woodworking tools from the simplest to the most complex. Today, we look at the hammer. The hammer, while often replaced by more intricate joinery methods of woodworking, is still a necessary staple in the woodworker's toolbox. Now, as much as some woodworkers would argue, this is not a hammer. Stop using it like one. Of course, this is not a hammer. And this is not a drill. Repeat, this is not a drill. The broadcasters in your area, in cooperation with the FCC and other authorities, has developed this system in order to keep you informed in the event of an emergency. If this would have been an actual emergency, this is not a drill. How it operates. Similar to the drill in episode one, this is the handle. Normally you grab the handle as if you're shaking hands with somebody. Try not to drop the hammer on your foot, because if you do, you will get, wait for it, you guessed it, hammer toe. The hammer is often referred to as repair method 1A. Like most tools, it should be thought of as an extension of your own body. In fact, the human body and the hammer have much in common. This is called a face. This is called a neck. This is called a bell or the pole. This is the cheek. And this, of course, is the claw. This is, of course, a claw hammer, hence the claw. The claw hammer is one of the carpenter's most basic tools. The head is often made of steel, but there are soft hammers used in woodworking that are made of wood so as not to mar the work. The handle can be made out of wood, fiberglass, steel, or other composite materials. Different combinations of materials allow the transfer of energy to the face of the hammer while absorbing most of the impact so as not to reflect it back to the user. The hammer was originally named after the hammerhead shark, who, while not a particularly intelligent animal, can nail two boards at the same time while underwater. Hey, hammerhead, you want to nail these boards? Okay. The hammer is swung in a combination of movements by bending the elbow and the wrist in this fashion. This normally generates enough kinetic energy to the impact point of the face of the hammer and the head of the nail, not to be confused with the nail on the finger. In a somewhat related point, good aim with a hammer is achieved by hitting the fingernail one too many times. Note, one is too many times. How? Here are the different types of hammers you may come across. I'll give a short explanation of each so you learn why there are so many different types. The claw hammer has a claw that can be used to remove nails. Warning, when in a construction site, do not throw your hammer like an axe, spinning it from 50 feet away at a concrete wall wondering how close you can get to the actual target. It can bounce back and be quite dangerous. Bill, I'm sorry about your foot back in 1989, but yes, you did hit the target. The ball peen hammer and the straight peen hammers. These hammers are used for metalwork. Stop driving nails with them just because you misplaced all the other hammers in your toolbox. The clump or lump hammer is basically a small sledgehammer, as opposed to the sledgehammer, which is a large club hammer. Eh? That makes sense. The mallet. While many people call a club hammer a mallet, a club hammer is but one type of mallet. Many mallets have wood or a soft rubber head. The mallet is, of course, the most perverted of all the hammers. Wood or soft rubber head. Oh, and speaking of soft rubber heads, rubber and soft hammers are hammers that are used like mallets and are designed not to damage the surface. Some have interchangeable shaped faces which are useful for woodwork, easing tight doors, window trim fittings, or for light assembly work. A framing hammer is used for nailing the framework of timber buildings. It has a longer and heavier build than a standard claw hammer, usually with a very straight claw. This is not to be confused with a sprig hammer, which is made by picture frame makers. I borrowed this photo from a friend of mine, Holly. Yes, yes, it is indeed a sprig of Holly.
I'll breeze through some of the rest of the hammers rather quickly as they mostly apply to certain trades or specialties. The aluminum hammer is for soft face or molding metal without damaging the surface. Blocking hammers are used for shaping metal on a block or anvil. Copper and hide hammers have copper at one end and a rawhide on the other. It's used mostly for car bodywork. Geologists pick hammers. As the name implies, this is a small spiked pickaxe for knocking fragments of rock. Possession of one of these hammers is the only way of differentiating the common bearded woodworker from the grizzled old prospector. <laughs> Lath hammers are hammers with a small axe on one end for cutting and the other head for nailing laths on plaster. You should always have a hardy lath if you're plastered. <laughs> lath hammer. A planishing hammer is a metal woodworking hammer. It's used to smooth out hammered metal, which still has the hammer marks on it from forming the shape. The planishing hammer should not be confused with the vanishing hammer, a phenomenon which coincides with the lending of your tools to your in-laws. Roofers and slating hammers are tools with a spike on one end for putting nail holes in roof slates and a hammer to knock the nails which hold the slates to the roofing battens. They also have a claw in the middle for pulling or removing nails. Scaling hammers are used to remove scale from boilers. When you try to use them to remove scales from fish, well, it's not a pretty sight. Scutch hammers. A scutch hammer is used for scutching or knocking off old mortar from bricks and paving. And yes, if you drink too much scutch, you will be hammered. <laughs> Tack and upholstery hammers are typically magnetized and or have a slotted end to start off upholstery tacks. And then you can change to the round or normal head to finish it off. When you run out of tacks, go to your nearest government official. They will be happy to tax you. Brick and mortar hammers. These hammers are used by builders sometimes and have a chisel on one or both ends. They are used by masons for breaking bricks or stones neatly. A drywall hammer will have a small axe on one end of the head and a hammer face on the other. The axe is used for cutting or opening plasterboard. It's very similar to a lath hammer. They are limited to drywall, because wet walls are so soft and mushy, you wouldn't even need a hammer. <laughs> Lath hammer. And finally, there's Thor's hammer. Now that you know a little bit about the different types of hammers, just remember, no matter how big a hammer you use, you cannot knock common sense into some people. This is Javier Unzueta with Javi's Woodshop. I hope you've gotten a little something out of today's episode of... Tools for the Unenlightened. If you know a beginning woodworker or a crafter looking to increase their skill set, send them to this playlist to expand their knowledge of woodworking tools or for the occasional laugh. Please subscribe and have a wonderful day.